What's going on, people? Welcome to another edition of Every Man's a Millionaire. Your hustling godfather's your host. Today, we're going to talk about starting a business, life, in love with a scarcity mindset. Let's make sure that we have everything that we need. Uh huh. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Appears to be going well. It's interesting. All right. Don't like that color, but we we will definitely get that straight. All right. So one of the things that I want to talk about is how many people start any endeavor with a scarcity mindset. One of the big problems with the scarcity mindset is you think that you're going to fail before you start. Now, this isn't to be confused with being practical and being cautious and saying, hey, I'm going to start this business, but I'm only going to take a select sum of money and I'm going to work with that. That's called the calculated risk. You know, you're not saying that, hey, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a lot of money and I'm going to knock it out the park. But you do give yourself the benefit of practicality while executing at a small scale. But many people don't want to do that. This is how the average person starts a business. It's a hobby. And then when it starts becoming more of a responsibility, then it's just not so fun anymore. And then they just don't want to do it unless they get massive results real quick. Many folks are just not trying to be responsible because see the scarcity mindset, what I believe it to be is a lack of accountability mindset and a lack of responsibility because once you start taking on responsibility, once you start to look at your thing a little differently, this isn't so hard, but as long as you want it to be fun and this is a big, big problem in all of the learning spheres of the internet, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, it must be fun, it must be lit, it must be hot. You know, I'm gonna give you a tip. How to listen to a video or a book that's not very entertaining. There are a ton, and I mean a ton of content creators here on YouTube that offer amazing advice and they don't get many views because maybe their presentation isn't the best. Um, maybe they're a little dry. Maybe they don't have the best tools for making YouTube videos. Maybe the audio's off. Any one of these things is wrong is enough to knock people off the frame, meaning people's like, I'm not gonna listen to you. I struggle with that because I've worked really hard on my audio and I hear videos and then I hear the dog, well, not the dog barking, but just ambient noise and stuff. And I was like, okay. So what I do is I take that video, I put it to the side and I do something else and I listen because it's not requiring 100% of my focus. I'm not focusing on all of the defects and the things that are wrong. And I get the message. <laughs> this is how I, I listen to probably four to six hours of YouTube videos per day that way. When I'm eating, uh, when I'm researching, uh, sometimes, now I can't do that when I'm consulting, but passively, anything that I can do that is passive, then I get into that. So uh, I'm checking the stream here because last time I tried this, I'd be looking over here. It's not as horrible, but you know. Now, another thing that happens and we're going to talk about life. I used to work in the hospital. I used to take care of many geriatric patients and I talked to them. And there was many groups of people. There wasn't just two groups. There were several groups. And I'm going to say there was probably four main buckets. There were the people who live life the way they wanted it to. And they were happy. Uh, I knew this one guy. He was about 87 and he had terminal cancer and he used to joke about it. He's like, well, I was supposed to die 20 years ago. So, hey, 
20 years to the plus side. And he was real happy and he had his family there. Then I come to find out this guy had been really successful. He had married well. He had loving kids. The man had a good life. So he wasn't really despondent about dying. He really wasn't. It was the craziest thing. He was like, I worry about my wife. She'll be alone. That was his biggest concern. Another group of people, they were in stark fear of dying. Because it's like, I haven't done this. I haven't done that. I haven't done this. Then there was another group of people who wanted to die so they can end the pain. And then there was another group of people who just, they didn't care one way or another. And I, I really started to study these people. And I used to study their motivations. And I used to look at them. And I made a choice. I don't think it was an unconscious choice. But I wanted to be like the people in the first group who were happy because they had built good lives. And I remember talking to uh, this gentleman and I said, uh, what made you decide to go? Because, you know, he had a long story. He, he went back to school. He had um, gotten a degree. Then he started a company. He did all this stuff. And he said, I made a decision to do it. And I committed to it. You know, it's not really complex. He said, many people don't want to commit to anything. They want to keep their options open. It's like when I committed to my wife, there was other girls who were prettier, better looking, but some just said she's the one. And, you know, she's blessed me with four children. We don't fight. And I was just listening to this, right? Then I listened to other people. And then some people had dementia. Some people had Alzheimer's. And it was just a really sad state of affairs. But many people get into this scarcity mindset because of fear. They are afraid to live because I'll actually share something that happened with me. I was um, afraid to start this school. You know why? Because I did it before. And I don't think I've ever told anyone this, but due to the fact that Stripe doesn't like the word hustle and they wouldn't approve the site, I've had to hack it meaning people pay through paypal then i would add them and it was like 20 and 30 coming in a day it was overwhelming but once again i was very micro in that thinking and i went through with it and i, I just you know and once it started to die down i was kind of happy and i remember talking to a friend of mine tommy powers he'll probably be on this channel or digital money and he had a similar experience and i was like okay you, you you're hustling backwards here why would you turn down money? Because it was working me. It was taking me to a higher place of a responsibility that I just didn't want. So this time around, because remember, I consulted last year and said, all right, we got to do this different. We got to build the systems and processes in. And this lunch, and this is what's really interesting. This lunch is so much easier because I really thought about it I committed to it and I said, I'm going to be responsible. And one of the things like someone signs up, like in the beginning, I was getting like a lot. And I was like, give me 24 hours. Now someone signs up. Sometimes it only takes me 30 minutes because, oh, there's the email. I go in and I send all this stuff. And now I look forward to it because now I have a process. And then there's going to be someone hired to do this. And once again, I'll just walk you through some of the problems. A lot of these uh, internet marketers and of course, they don't really, because I'm in some of the groups and they really don't talk about this stuff. One of the biggest problems is logins. And why is login a problem? Because now with the new email rules, a lot of people send out emails that look professional and they go straight to the spam folder. So the person on the other end who's supposed to get the email, they're like, hey man, I ain't got no emails. You know, I signed up last Friday and this is once again, processes and systems. I was like, okay, because what I do is I send a screenshot that has the date that I signed them up once again to maintain confidence. Then I was like, look, here's a link because, you know, I just because I'm doing this myself before I hire someone to work out all the uglies. And I'm really glad I'm doing it this way. But once again, you have to be responsible. This is $3,000. This is a lot of money for people. And once again, I, you know, one night I was up to like one o'clock in the morning adding people. But that's because you have to be responsible. You have to commit to responsibility. Uh, another reason, and we're going to talk about love. 
uh, this was going to be on Disruptive Mail channel, but I don't know what has happened to men. And I've got some videos coming up on male nature for Disruptive Mail. I read the comments and so many men are despondent. They're upset. Part, part of the reason I get it, but it's like they just take it. They don't do anything about it. It is the strangest thing. And I'm sitting there like, what is it with these guys who are not going to rise up to the occasion? And then I started to think about it and it's indoctrination, which once again, I'll do a special video on disruptive mail. But we have been trained as men to be submissive, complicit and complacent. Because socially in word, we get rewarded. Oh, He's such a good man, but physically we're not rewarded by women for this behavior. We're rewarded for being assholes for the lack of a better word. And it's very, very interesting dynamic. So you see all of these people who in life don't want to take responsibility and don't want to commit in business. Don't take, want to take responsibility. Don't want to commit. And in life and in, in love don't want to, take responsibility and don't want to commit. And the, the end product of this lack of commitment is a miserable, horrible life. You got people out there. I, I just I found this video this morning and I, I'm, I'm going to do this guy. I, I said I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it in a way that it's going to be an educational way because there's a lot of stuff he says that is not true. And I know it's not true because if he was getting the results that he said that he was getting with women, he wouldn't be so angry. It, you can't like, I used to hate women after my divorce. I didn't mess with women for three years. Then I started to systematically figure out a process and get game and my results started to drastically improve then one day I looked up and was like oh I don't really hate women anymore I have no reason to hate women most of the women that I want that I approach I get play I usually get what I want so if you're getting these good results because he's like you know I get women I, I get ladies like, no you don't no you don't your actions are incongruent with what you're saying and it's just like, wow, and there's this flock. There's these merry band of lemmings who are following this Pied Piper, right? I'm sitting there like, this is crazy. And part of the reason I know he's lying is from my Craigslist protocols. I saw guys like him on Craigslist, you know, sending chicks dick pictures and stuff. Just a word of advice. Don't send the dick pic. You'd be better off sending the some cash pictures of some cash you you would be much better off actually i'm gonna do that story where i <laughs> i sent this chick i'll i'll, I'll even go into it because this is streams gonna be kind of all over the place and she was just talking smack and then um i had like 1500 bucks in my wallet so i took it out and put it on my computer screen took a picture of it and sent it to her and she said now we're talking i was like, you ain't getting this you ain't worth this i just sent it to you to let you know that you missed out then I didn't contact her for about for two weeks. And then uh, she emailed me and I'm like, look, I ain't tricking. So she's like, no, no, no. It's just, let me. and then she had this whole thing. We ended up meeting up and you know, that went down and I still didn't spend no money. Part of this thing that is happening with society is people are and social media has a lot to do with it. Social media has a ton to do with it. People are looking at a snapshot of someone's life and they're developing this thirst for that life without really knowing the work that goes in that's involved in getting that life. Like I just walked you through a process and this is a process like with logins. This is a huge, huge issue, but no one talks about it. No one talks about it. No one has a process on how to deal with it. You know, they just don't talk about it. So, cause if you're going to get X amount of sales and based upon this new email deal, this is going to happen. And I don't see anyone saying, Hey, you know, I got all these problems. These people, they're not getting the emails. Cause uh, with think of if the 
site emails must look like a commercial email and they're going into the spam folder. How did I find this out? I, I, we're at like 150, 160 for Hustler Undergrad. Just 160 sales. But you, you hear people out here, it's like, yeah, we sold thousands. But they never brought this up. And this happened on every lunch that I've had. Every one. Be, well, I should say it happened because I had to hack it. But now with Gmail, Yahoo, they're filtering out um, business type emails. This is happening to everyone. I'll check in the group to see if they're talking about it. But if you want to be successful, you can't start a business or life or even go after women with a scarcity mindset. This is one of the things that I see to be the problem. It's not a problem. It's the problem. And it's a huge, huge problem because uh, like I, I just sit there and read these comments that were steeped in mediocrity, steeped in self-hate, anger, which happens. That's a part of life. But I didn't really see anyone with no solutions. On my Facebook page, we have a conversation going on where I've gotten into it with the whole tips and I hit them with some truth. Okay, everything you say is true. Yes, Tulsa happened. Black Wall Street, yeah, all that happened. What are you doing today to end so-called white supremacy? Nothing. Not a word, nothing. Because many people, just like women, like a lot of women are in love with the process of getting married. The, the wedding, the engagement ring, the fancy pictures, the parties and all this stuff. But they're not really interested in the duties of being a wife. Many people want a business. So they say they want the money. They want the respect. They want the prestige. They want the acuteness. They want the cars, the houses, all this other stuff. Uh, the work. <laughs> Miss me with that. <laughs> Miss me with that. Uh, nah, 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 nah. It's a very, very strange uh, situation because those of us who realize that success is a lot of work, it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of nights that you just up working, there ain't nobody but you, maybe you got a dog or a cat to keep you company, but it's just you working, I ain't making a lot of money, but you, you've got that commitment and you know if you keep hitting it, one day it's going to break wide open. And a lot of people just don't have enough intestinal fortitude, stamina to stick with something long enough to bear fruit. I get a lot of people who, and also, just to let you guys know, Glendon at hundergrad.com is for people, is for students only. If you're not a student, I'm deleting your email. I'm not even opening it. You will not get a response. That is for students only. Because uh, I got all these emails and I get hit with all this stuff. I got people who are hitting me in the DMs on Instagram. I got people hitting me up on Facebook. Do you know I have a backlog of about three, four hundred messages on feedback? I just don't have the time to be answering this because it's like, hey, I'm not that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a rabbit trap. That's a rabbit hole. Hey, well, how are you? How are you going? What's going on? I don't know. what's going. I don't have time for that. <laughs> I simply don't have time for that. So respect that you know if you're not a member and once again a member um you have people who want to ask questions when i do these live streams ask your question right here this is the free content this is the way for you to get your questions answered not a personalized email because i know everybody wants personal attention and the only people i'm giving personal attention are my students that's it you know they, they are they're paying they deserve personal attention you know, just because you are going like, hey, man, you know, I want to spend with you. I got a few questions Then hit me up with like this five or 10 paragraph email with, with all these questions, the process questions, which are consulting questions. I'm like, man, you know, I've been through this before and I know how it usually ends up. If I answer these questions, you still ain't going to buy. You just trying to get over. Facts. But if you want to be successful, 
How does one get rid of the scarcity mindset? And I've got some good answers for you. Practicality, practice, and commitment. Start with small things. Like, if you're a person that can't get up on time, or you're always late, start there. Fix that first. Because I, I, I this, this just cracks me up. You have people with all these really bad personal habits, yet they think they're going to go out and conquer the world. No, you're not. You have bum habits. You're going to get bum results. I, You know, back in my day, they used to fire you for being consistent and late. Now they just deal with it because, you know, they're afraid you may come in and shoot the place up because you're unstable and stuff. But start small. Start fixing all of the stuff that's in your life that needs fixings. Work on that first. Because it's going to, you know, business is hard. Having a successful business is hard, it's challenging, it's a lot of hours, and you're just not going to be able to hack. You know, they're, they're like there'll be people who will hit a good trend, like Facebook. Facebook has lost half of its traffic in the last two years. I want you to really think about that. Half of it. YouTube, and I actually said this, it's like, I am not going to start doing the Facebook streams. I'm not going to. Uh, you, you can't monetize it. Facebook is Facebook is set up where you can't stream on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Why? Why did they do that? And when I found that out, I was like, you know what? I, I'm out. I'm trying to do some stuff and y'all got all these firewalls up because you want everybody to be on Facebook. I ain't, I'm not playing that game. And how did I make this decision? Practicality. Because I do this stuff. I do it. And that, that's another thing. You have to become a doer. You have to invest in the process. Like, you know, everyone that signed up for Hustle Undergrad. I said 20 months. This, this ain't going to be over. But I, I want you to understand. There will be people who are not making any money. And uh, I'm going to do the first webinar probably Monday night. And I'm not going to do it Sunday. But I'm probably going to do it Monday night. And that alone it's going to probably get some people because see if you are broke dick danny penless priscilla you live in hand to mouth this is not going to help you because you don't have anything to manipulate but if you're like making 50 80 100k a year this one technique will literally pay for the course so we're going to talk about that and there's going to be five or six the art of holding company sessions because they're going to be very detailed but there will be people 20 months from now who will be making consistently $500, $1,000, two and $3,000 per month and keep their job. You know, that's going to be life changing for a lot of people. It really is. Because one of the things that I did, like, let me tell you what happened to me today. Um, I don't have it here. I'm actually using it. I got a new lens, right? And because of the cost of it, they just don't leave it. You have to sign for it. Yesterday, the FedEx guy came, but I was home. Cars in the driveway. He ain't knocked, so I missed it. So I was like, all right, I, I'm going to have to pick it up. So I went to the Walgreens down the street. I walk into the store. There's a lady. She's on the phone. It is clear that she's conducting personal business. Clear. And I was kind of waiting. She's like looking at me and she's trying to because I get the feeling there's something going on because she's kind of whispering and she's giving her address and something. So there's something going on. So I go back into the photo area and then I see the sign like FedEx pickup. So there's this guy and he had like left his area and he was talking to this chick. And and I, I, I was sitting there and I worked very hard at not becoming an asshole. When you get money and you used to getting results, it's very easy for you to become an asshole. But uh, I have empathy. So I was just like, you know what? You've got three people in here who are ignoring you. Do what you do with chicks who are ignoring you. So the guy was trying to walk away and I was like, hey, excuse me. You're the guy that handles the FedEx thing loud. Everyone turned around. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do your job. So I get my lens and everything. And the other day, a similar situation where someone else on the job, not serving me, and she had a personal situation. So I went way back in time, and I realized, you know, that used to be you, man. 
had a personal situation, had to use PTO, take time off, go around the corner, sneaking, trying to get your bills handled on the phone, trying to beg to, with the power company to keep you. And I was like, man, these people are catching L's all over the place. That's why I think that this economy is not as great as people pretend it to be. So I, I got my stuff and I came on that. I, I got reflective. How did I get out of that spot of being just like those people? Just like them. Commitment, starting small, consistency. See, th this is the thing that's going to trip you up. If you can commit to doing something for one to three years, regardless of the outcome, you're going to get good outcomes. But if your ideal of commitment is a few weeks or a few months, you ain't really going to get much out of life. You're just not. Because that's the scarcity mindset. Because you don't think that something good's going to happen, you give up and you move on to the next thing. You move on to the next thing. You move on to the next thing. And you just have all of these L's behind you, which then in turn reduces your self-confidence. Then you don't, you, you, you don't even want to try, which is what happened to all of these guys who are following this this pipe piper, the charlatan dude, he ain't getting the result that he says he is. This I know because if he was doing the work, he was getting the results that he claimed, he wouldn't be angry. He just wouldn't. All right, let's see what's going on in the chat. <laughs> oh man, I got all kinds of stuff in here. As I'm like I'm saying, I'm playing around with a lot of stuff here. Um, and I, I really don't like the phone, and I think it's because I'm used to looking at the screen. Eh, that's not horrible. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's see. What do we got up in here? We got all these folks. What's up, Johnny? Randall, Christian, Yolanda, Mitter, Shelley. What's going on? We got all the, the usual, the regular folks. All right, all right. Oh, um, there's some people, regardless of what I put up, they instantly thumbs it down because they hate me. <laughs> it's just part of YouTube. Yep, logins are a huge issue. Uh, Josh, you don't rise to the occasion. You fail to the highest level of preparation. Men are not being trained to be men. No, they're not, man. Josh, no, they're not. What's up, John Doe? Be real. Christian. Supersonic. You think AMS is lying as well? <laughs> I've, I've cured. The, I, all right. Here's the thing with the dick pictures, right? If a woman, if it's not her penis, she ain't really interested in it. Unless it's like abnormally large or something, she might be curious. But even with that. Now, Christian, one of the things you're going to find out is once you get started, this is going to make a big difference in what you will get into. Because as long as you're sitting on the, on the sidelines, um, you don't know what's going on. Because like I said. Because I was making videos, I knew that YouTube was going to beat Facebook in the video game. And everyone's like, no, it ain't, no, it ain't, no, it ain't. And like, here we are. <laughs> but once again, I'm a technician. Good Lord, what's that? What's up, Nick? Nimmin? I don't have a fitness course. Not yet. Not yet. Appreciate you, Nick. What's up, Pamela? Since the oh man, they're going after him. What's up, Fred W. John uh, Doe. Romel Fisher. Good info. A successful business is the best retirement plan. That is what I am working on. I don't ever see myself, quote, retiring like a traditional retiring. And I always see myself having an active form of income. Yeah. 
<laughs> I know Pamela is funny. 285 property. Uh, all right, this is what's going on. I'm moving next week, and I'm thinking I need to drop the first webinar probably Monday. Because I was like, um, what I do is I do a lot of research on the weekends, and I actually like how that goes, so I'm not doing videos. So we're probably going to do it Monday night. And that will be in for the art of holding companies. Sense of reality. There you go. How can you conquer the world when you can't conquer yourself? I mean, little things loom large. What's up, Edward? Let's see. Yeah, you got to grind, man. But one of the things we're going to talk about in the Hustle Undergrad is the process of creating systems. John Doe, my biggest problem is getting these damn clients to do marketing, but something ain't right. Um, next time, you, you got clients right now, John Doe, right? Send them aside and it's like, hey, why would you sign up with me? And take that information and apply it to your marketing. What's up, Fred? Stefan? Pretty much. Thank you, Cody. Timothy. Uh, yes, I do. Come on. Um, I, Christian, uh, this is what cracks me up about YouTube. Every time you turn around, you see some YouTube ass that says someone's making a hundred K a month or two. And I think that's bullshit. It is not bullshit. There are people, I know people who are making a million a month, but they're not newbies. Um, the people, I would say they've been doing this eight to 12 years. So it's possible, but these guys have processes, systems, a track record, history. But yeah, uh, the, the way it's sold is like, you're going to be able to do that in a few weeks. That's not going to happen for most people. Uh, Erica, my 11 year old nephew knocks doors to cut grass and so many people let him because they don't see kids, boys doing work. That is something that's really interesting. Uh, KMA, I don't know anything about drop shipping. I, I can't help you with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot of different stuff. All right, Sir Nicholas. Because the thing is, uh, Craigslist is still good for selling stuff. It's just you got to make your ads stand out. Out for presidents. I recently, um, did you like join while we were on the stream? Because uh, typically what happens is when you join, let's say give me 24 hours. Because some people, a lot of people join in the middle of the night. I had like four or five orders between one and four o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and sign you up. Then I'm going to send you an email. So if you just joined while we're on the stream, I haven't gotten to that process yet, but I will get to that tonight. Um, someone else has handled the moving thing, so I don't know. Uh, Christian, I need some advice on how to set myself apart on YouTube as a fitness YouTuber. I'm going to give you some ideas. Start vlogging about your life. Make your life very interesting and then mix in the fitness. I've seen a lot of YouTubers. I can actually tell you Christian Guzman, uh, Shawnee, I forget his name, uh, Javon Alvin, Nikki Blackleather. This Texas click, uh, they all have killer channels and they do a lot of vlogging and they mix it up the workout. So, I mean, seriously, uh, dude took me to the grocery store. Dude took me to Best Buy to get a television. They just telling stories. Uh, Alpha presidents, what you need to do is if you signed up. 
then you have you're like you're probably one of the people who didn't get the email. So email me with your real <laughs> name at Glendon uh, Glendon at H undergrad dot com and we'll get you set up. Uh, Eric Williams, God does two million in two years from his mom's house, but he didn't tell you he had two partners and one of the partners father is rich in the real estate field. The stuff they don't say. There's a lot of uh, the great Paul Harvey was like the rest of the story. There's a lot of that. Well, many VIP via many VIF. A lot of people just don't want to work that hard. I mean, that's what it really comes down to. Reselling is not easy. So thanks for the ten dollars super chat. Thanks for the five dollars super chat. Hey, Max Chewing is killing it. Now, and this and Erica, that's a good example. Max Chewing has like a big deadlift, but he don't really look like he lift. But his vlogs are amazing. His vlog, because uh, he'll do the 360 camera, and he's just literally riding a bike, but he makes it look so interesting that you watch it. Leslie Scared, period. Cali Muscle. Migalon, what's the hardest part for a G starting? Starting. You're better off starting something that you're mildly curious in and getting experience than just sitting around waiting until the thing that's going to make your heart beat fast. What's up, Christian? Thanks for the $10 super chat. Because essentially, you got a lot of people who don't want to commit to it. And this is a big part because like this, this guy, because normally I wasn't going to go after YouTubers, but part of this is the environment. And part of this is I want to teach young men how to win and just submitting to mediocrity. Just, I can understand if you want to go MGTOW, but there's, there's a way there, there is a way. And a lot of guys are, pretty much opting out, but they still have that biological imperative. So they're, they're getting jealous like this, this, this thing with the chads, they've come up with this nomenclature of guys who are good with women or what pre-selected. That's the thing. I'm not pre-selected. I just learned a lot of game. I'm not pre-selected at all. I've just learned how to turn certain attributes of my personality on and off to get the results I want. A lot of people just want, they just want that natural charisma. And if you talk to a lot of guys who are good with women and they open, they had to learn that stuff. It just didn't happen. All right, uh, out for presidents. There's a lot of things you can do. Chris Jones. Chris has really upped up his video game. He's really upped it up. All right, JCH. What's up, Flipping Hustler? Yeah, you got a lot of folks who just... Um, I mean, it, it's disheartening, but... It seems that if you don't automatically come out the womb with the whatever you need, it, people get this dis, uh, discouraged. Like right now, let's talk about YouTube. This channel is compromised because uh, of so many things I've done and I use paid traffic on it. It just recently because I turned the paid traffic off and we're going on seven months and it's just now starting to come back. Just now, because uh, older videos are resurfacing. People are watching content from two or three years ago. And that's because I use paid traffic on it. Did I give up? No, I was just like, okay, well, this doesn't work. That doesn't work. This doesn't work. Oh, this right here works. Let's do more of that. That's the whole process. Eric Wynn, this lady is like, how are you so good in social and good in social group practice practice? 
Uh, there's this one person. Her name was Amy Schmidermeyer. And Amy, Amy just little. she didn't really, I can't say she blew up. Amy was on YouTube before I was. But you, Amy got with some good people. She got some good training. She started applying it. And then she put out the video. I mean, I think Amy was at like 50 th some thousand subscribers last year. She's up to 300 and something. And every video she puts out is 50, 60, 70,000 views. She learned that. It, it, once again, she just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. And it broke free. Because... Um, one of the things I've noticed is like you'll see a lot of these new YouTubers with a lot of subscribers, but their total video views are not that good, which is interesting. Nope, it doesn't, Mika. Douglas, one of my first lovers told me after two weeks, if I didn't learn how to dance, she would leave me. <laughs> She sounds like Amorosa. That was ruthless. Flipping hustler. Take hope out of your vocabulary and replace it with no. All right, Jabras. Yes, I remember you. And this is something else, too. Like, I remember most people, because some of you have screen names that are reflective of your email names. And some of you, I have no clue. None. That's why I was like, um, oh, yeah. If you have use the email address from your PayPal to sign up, because I'll get people who will sign up and they will email me from their vanity, like Shaggy876. And it's like, yeah, I was like, who are you? Oh, yeah, this is the email I used to sign up. <laughs> it's funny. All right. So for those of you, because I, I, I was teasing around, um, this is what's going to happen. I haven't set it all up yet, but the first webinar for the holding company is going to be Monday. I haven't, it'll probably be Monday evening just to, um, yeah, it'll probably be Monday evening to give people the time to be there. And we're going to talk about the uh, philosophy of the holding company. We're going to talk about, and I'm going to teach you exactly what I'm doing right now on this house, which it's literally going to blow your mind. It really is. So the price for both of these, $159.99 and $99, is going to stay the same until Monday. So it's not going up today, which is Friday, but you need to get in before Monday. And I'm going to tell you, it's literally going to be the worth the price of the whole shebang. Uh, flipping hustler, I will tell you that uh, reselling channels have gone nuclear. I think his name is Resell Rabbit, and he started doing. You know what's funny? I wanted to do this, but I had a conflict because I was out of the business. But Resell Rabbit started live streaming in from his warehouse, and it literally blew up. Like he got like 2.3 million on the video in a week. And this is something that I, I had to make this decision. I knew that the showing of buying storage auctions and stuff would be big. I didn't know it would be that big, but I didn't want to do it anymore. And I was like, you know what? Because if you notice, I left the resale community, gave away the resale group and just like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm a content creator. I'm going to stick with this. So, you know, good for him and congratulations. It just shows you that these things are very interesting because there are so many niches in YouTube <laughs> that are underserved is crazy. All right, Sanderson. So, all right, go below. It's one fifty nine ninety nine times 20, 20 months, one and done. Then you graduate into disruptive money consulting program. And if you want the, um, the art of holding companies, that's 99 bucks a month, like 1500. So you can go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to tell you something else early. I'm going to do another thing pretty soon. And I'm going to call it Salesmatic, which will be included in 
Hustle Undergrad. So if you buy Hustle Undergrad, you will get Salesmatic because uh, it's going to be geared for selling online. It'll be geared for using YouTube to sell. So that's coming along with this other stuff. So just to let you know. Oh, well, you know, I mean, it's three thousand dollars. For the undergrad right now, and then for the art of holding company, that's fifteen hundred bucks. What I've did is I responded to the marketplace. Let's keep it real. Most folks don't have three thousand dollars laying around per the survey that the average person can come up with two thousand dollars in 30 days. So I did some long term subscriptions and I had two people flake on me. So it's like, you know, that's a really amazing success rate. So I'm going to do it again. And salesmatic would probably be one fifty a month. Because uh, essentially I got to do the holding companies because we're going to do this in a logical manner because you need to create the holding company first. Then all this other stuff can come after this because you want the holding company to be set up. You want it to be set up right and you want it to start aging. That's the key. That's one of the big keys for long term wealth building. So we're going to get that going and then we're going to start talking about some of this other stuff because. You know, for folks who are willing to invest 150 bucks a month, I'm quite sure they're ready to take it to the next level. So we're going to start serving them. All right. So once again, that links below. Nothing's changing until. Sunday night or Monday. And I'm going to now. Oh, yeah. For those of you who are students, do this. Um, check your email and go to your spam folder. And all the emails you got from me, which will be coming from Glendon at H undergrad, go ahead and move them into your inbox. So when I send you stuff, it doesn't go straight to your spam folder. So we get this because once again, it's just a small group of people. Like I said, we're at 160. And I'm really glad I did it this way. And essentially, I'm going to tell you the whole plan. So just hold on. What I'm going to do is take a lot of this money once because uh, I got to hire someone that's going to happen. Then I'm going to take some money and put it on paid traffic. I'm going to raise the price of the product and probably be getting 100 people a month because I was like, whoa, I was looking at this. I was like, this is really, really working. So that's going to be the long term plan. But everyone that gets in now because typically they'll probably get less. They'll probably pay more for less. So for those of you who are getting in now, you're going to get way more bang for the buck, way more. But that's what's going to happen because uh, once again, I started off small. No paid traffic, direct response model. And what is this? I'll, I'll, I'll use my phone because uh, there are some people paying 159 because there's like 160 in Hustle Undergrad, and then there is um, like 12 or 15 in the Art of Holding Companies. So I was like 150 times 160. All right, so that's $24,000 a month reoccurring revenue. And we're not done yet. Direct response sales, no paid traffic, a very simple, and there ain't no funnel. It's like, here it is. You, you want it? Cool. If not, hey, have a nice life. Direct sales. $24,000 reoccurring revenue as we stand and probably will hit 30 at the end of the month. Doing exactly what I tell you that if you're a beginner, you should do. If you're a beginner, you shouldn't be messing around with paid traffic because if you get it wrong, you're going to burn through a lot of money. But if you do direct response, you can earn money from a small crowd once again this channel is compromised if this channel was getting like half a million views like it did last year that number would probably be three times as high direct response works if you don't know what you're doing if you want to do something on the internet picking up the phone works so i'm just letting you know um you're gonna have you're gonna have to actually explore these niches this is one of the worst things that can happen to someone who's looking for a niche. 
you watch a YouTuber, you go to a blog, and someone tells you the best niches, right? In a matter of weeks or months, they're no longer the best niches or the underserved niches. There is so much value in doing your own work. I mean, like, let's take this YouTube channel. Um, we get probably 80, 90,000, probably 80 to 95,000 hits per month, which for a website is really good. For a YouTube channel, eh. But I've been able to convert that into probably going to be thirty some thousand dollars a month recurring revenue. You have people here on YouTube who have 1.6 million subscribers who only make three to seven thousand dollars a month AdSense, and it varies depending upon the ad budgets. And they're getting like this girl, she had 1.6, she's getting like 800,000 hits a month, and she's making six thousand dollars a month from AdSense. Now, if she had her own product, <laughs> she could probably make easy six figures a month. Easy. She could sell a $10 product. Yeah, $10, maybe $20 product and make six figures a month. But once again, uh, YouTube, a lot of folks are now shifting to this business model because of AdSense rules and stuff like that. I've been doing this for 10 years. This is why... I did not get into the, the Facebook thing and all this other stuff. I didn't get into the funnels. You know what's funny? I had a hater on um, Facebook. And he was like, Glennon thinks his training in funnels is changing the world. I, I don't sell funnels. There are many people who think they know what I do because they don't listen. But I can tell you that once H undergrad is all fully vetted out and stuff H undergrad will be a million dollar business without a lot of ad spend that is an accomplishment if you're in the business if you're in the business you're like oh Glenda's just talking but if you're in the business because uh, essentially let's take the the 30 grand a month if you're selling a physical product or something like that you would probably have to make a hundred and twenty to a hundred and fifty thousand a month to extract that thirty grand. This is why they're like, hey, you know, last year I did a million dollars, and they only took home three hundred k. You know, I did one point five, I did two million, and only took three hundred k between the product cost, the paid traffic cost, and oh God, if they got partners, <laughs> it's wild. All right, thanks, Stefan. Sir Nicholas, the movers, that's already been set up. I ain't, I'm not working on that. Someone else is working on that. And they're paying, so. All right, mentor. Eric Williams, if you put paid traffic back on the channel. Well, see, one of the reasons that I did not put paid traffic. If you, if you notice, I'm experimenting with a lot of different stuff, different video formats, because what from my research, some people disagree from my research, filmmakers, people who have filmmaking techniques are killing it on YouTube. I know a guy who started his channel 16 months ago. He gets a million views a month, and he started from scratch with no... With, I mean, his you can look at his first videos. They got 800 hits, 2,000. And once he really honed in, because his uh, cinematic style is beautiful. Because uh, I was having this conversation with another YouTube consultant. And I was like, quality is everything. And he's like, maybe, maybe not. I'm like, no, I've seen it. I've seen a lot of channels just literally blow up because they had amazing thumbnails, amazing cinephotography, and great storytelling sales. Uh, skills so that's what I'm doing I'm working on that because I want to have these kind of videos and then bring the paid traffic back on it because the paid traffic is coming back but it's coming back in a very different way because um, I know how to make a commercial that doesn't look like a commercial you cannot come up with uh, like these whole creating an ad and it looks like an ad 
that's going to get harder and harder and harder. Uh, Lyft is creating commercials, but they don't look and they don't feel like commercials. So the art of storytelling, because I can tell a really good story. Um, once I get my cinematography, hence the, the, the upgrade in live streams, because I, I was doing this before. And then my piece of equipment just, I dropped it. Okay, I can't say it fell. I dropped it and it broke. Then I got another one today. I got this lens and I've got a Sony uh, Ace 3 coming. It's on back order. Probably going to go ahead and cop the Ace. Because what's going to happen is I'm probably going to have two or three or four angles with this. Because quality. Uh, there's another guy, the Red Pill Coach. From day one, he's been doing three or four angles. His last video he put up, and his channel's on, he got 70, 80,000 views. His last video. Uh, the cinema photography, the color grade, all that stuff is on point. So if you can tell a story and, and your cinema photography and all the stuff's on point, you will blow up. Wait a minute. Casey, what's that? Casey Nice. What is? He's a filmmaker. Uh, Peter McKinnon. He he's a filmmaker. Uh, you you see the trend here? <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna be a business person, but be, that also is a filmmaker. You're gonna see a lot of different stuff up here. Uh. Uh, well, I could tell you from experience that YouTube treats paid traffic way different than it does organic traffic. But there's a way that you can use paid traffic to grow a channel. I mean, I did it. I got like 30,000 subscribers last year in one month. And that's coming back. But once again, I wanted to work on the storytelling, work on the skills, work on the audience, you know, because I've just seen it blow channels up. It's not something that's an easy skill set to learn. It's not. And if it ain't easy, that means less people are doing it. I want to be there. So, all right. All right. So once again, links below. Price will stay the same until Sunday or Monday. I'll shoot a video. I'll do an email to let you know when the price is going to change. So with that, I'll see you good people later. I have to work out. I got to get in this workout today. You know, it's interesting. I actually had to stop working out first thing in the morning because I wasn't eating enough. It's the weirdest thing. You actually stop losing weight because you're not eating enough. Strange things. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Like, comment, let me know your thoughts. And I'll see you guys later. And have a happy, happy weekend.